Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for a friendly, supportive worm community, you are in the right place. Today we're going to be looking at Big Blue, my 55 gallon barrel. I actually cut the barrel long ways and then stuck the two ends together. I do have a playlist that shows blue from the beginning to the end, if you wanna go back and look at that. Last time we harvested with this 14, 1 fourth inch screen, and we're gonna do a little bit more of that today. Now, as we're going through, I'm just gonna talk about blue, and eventually we will, we will continue on the wedge method and we will get them fed up again today. Okay, so this part over here has dried out again. And so we are gonna just take a handful and go through it. If we see any stickers or anything that doesn't belong, I'm just gonna throw that off to the side. Give it a good shake. And then that will go in the business end of the bin where we're gonna feed later. Sometimes if it's super dry like this is, I will actually add some water to it so that it has a better chance of getting digested. So I think I will do that. I'm gonna collect up all of the, uh, the leavings on the top of the screen here. And I'm gonna put them in a bucket and add some water to it while we're doing the rest of the bin so that it can take a chance to absorb water and get digested next time. So with blue, I'm playing the long game. There are lots of things that take more than one cycle to get through, and uh, that's just fine with me. I don't expect everything to go away in the three to six months that it takes to get from the feeding end of the bin to the finished end of the bin. If you wanted to start a bin like this, you should probably give yourself a good six months to build up enough to where you can start harvesting. If it's the time of the year where you're being impatient, or if you are just impatient, then uh, this type of bin might give you anxiety. Um, in the beginning, I was uh, not really accustomed to waiting that long for any sort of uh, castings, but now that the whole system is running, I get to harvest almost every month. And that's probably less to do with blue and more to do with me not having time. I'm picking out any paper that hasn't digested by the time it gets to this end of the bin. I'm just going to assume there's something about it that can't be uh, digested. And uh, I know somebody, maybe AV, was working on compostable bags. Uh, I tried that about three years ago. This little piece here is a piece of one of the compostable bags. It, well, it's been at least three years and they are still in there. I think they're meant for like industrial composting, definitely not worm composting. I even went to the extent of thinking, okay, well, maybe if I put them in the microwave and expose them to high heat for a while, I might have a better chance of getting them to um, digest. And that did help, but as you can see, there are still remnants even after three years. So let me know in the comments below if you have had any experience being successful with compostable bags in a worm bin. The technology is always changing. So, you know, it is possible by the time you're watching this video that maybe they do have uh, better technology and the worms are able to digest it. But after three years, I pick everything out, out that I find because I'm not that patient. Uh, if it's more than three years, then I don't know. But it does take about six months to get to the point where you can get a harvest, maybe, maybe five gallons, sometimes 10 if you let it go a little bit longer a month out of a 55 gallon bin like this. Uh, believe it or not, even though it is mid-October here, I will probably be starting some of my seeds soon. The experience with Zone 5A where I live, um, I do like to grow super hot peppers. Not because I'm crazy because I want to eat them straight or anything, but I do like the flavor and uh, the kick that it puts into my salsa. 
but they almost take, or they do take six months to mature and bear fruit and ripen, sometimes even more since my climate is a little cooler. So I will be starting my super hots in December this year, which gives me just a, a little over a month to uh, get a good size harvest and get ready for seed starting of the super hots. I also have about the same problem with sweet potatoes. They're a super long season crop here where I live. Um, if I don't start the process of getting slips earlier, then I don't get any, uh, don't get much of a harvest. I actually grew my own slips for a few different kinds of them, and I purchased some, and they were delivered, I believe, in June, late June. And the ones that I purchased, I didn't get you know, even decent sized potatoes out of them. Whereas the ones that I started in uh, inside in January, I got some good sized potatoes. So gardening and worm farming is just an evolution. You just actually kind of, you have to learn what is good for your own environment. I mean, people that live in Florida could probably almost do sweet potatoes year, year round. Uh, and some people that live in, you know, zone three might not be able to do it at all. So let me know, what is your, what have you learned this year in your garden that uh, you're going to have to change up for the 2024 season? So as I'm doing this, I'm taking these and I'm putting them in a bin that has good moisture in it so that if there are any cocoons or worms that I'm not seeing here, they will live and also the uh, microbiology that lives within the castings, which is the entire point of castings, um, can stay alive until I need them. Even if it is all the way into spring, sometimes I'll even let worms live in there so that they continuously work through all of the material so that the microbes that we need stay active and uh, you know, if they start to die off, then the worm can eat them again and make sure that the, the castings are still good and alive by the time I need them. Put in the comments below if how you got into worm farming. Um, was it something your family always did? Did you hear about it someplace? Um, I did an interview with AJ's Green Topics and uh, yammered on for about an hour. I will actually put that link up there if you want to just hear me yammer on Sands the Worms. He did ask a lot of good questions about the backstory, so I recommend watching that. Um, I got into worms for the what I thought was like a fertilizer component. I thought it was a little ridiculous to spend $5 a pound on worm poop. So I thought, no, I will absolutely just get some worms and they will poop and I will steal the poop. I've got cats, I've got cat boxes, I know how it works, right? Um, and then the worms just kind of actually took over and has become really my main hobby here. We're getting down to the part where it's becoming too damp for me to sift well. If you sift when it is too damp, then the castings will actually kind of turn into little hard pea-like balls, and you don't want that because then they will harden and will be very difficult to get to rehydrate. So it's best that if you need castings and you want to sift, you do need to dry them out as much as you can. But this, this moisture, that's as far as I want to go. Anything wetter than this, I'm at jeopardy for um, basically clogging up the screen for one thing and then creating hard balls that uh, won't be any good for what I need them for. When I do put them away in the bin, I do allow them to get wetter because I'm not sifting anymore. Once they go into the storage bin, they don't get sifted. So um, I do add a little bit of water and a little bit of worm food of some sort so that anything that hatches or I missed has something to eat until uh, they're an eventual use out in the garden. All right, let's put this away and get moving the wedge over. 
this part right here, which is probably about a third of the bin, is what, is what I would consider to be completely finished. The only thing this needs to do now is to dry out the rest of the way and come to kind of an even moisture. So I'm doing what I consider to be a fluffing. Basically mix everything up, make sure it's all the same moisture, pick out any big chunks, throw that to the other end of the bin. That way that's one less thing to sift when I have to do the sifting. And to be clear, you don't have to do sifting. It is absolutely, you could just take this and put it in your garden as is, and that would be totally fine. I find that I get so many sprouts in my garden due to seeds and those are just the ones I can see. Um, I prefer to sift it to get out any of that so that I don't have to deal with playing. Is that the plant I wanted to grow or is this extra that came in with the worm castings? So then, yeah, so that's why I do the sifting. So we're gonna move things over slowly but surely here. And anything that's not finished like these bits of paper here, I will throw to the far end so that I don't get that in my final um, siftings if I can avoid it. There's not very many worms down here at all. You can see that you can see a handful of them, but for the most part, they are migrating towards uh, better moisture and also better um, food. So that's another helpful part of this wedge system is that you don't have to do the light migration, etc., that you do in other bins. That's why blue is probably my favorite bin. Even the ones that are half this size, they don't operate as great. The ones with the European night crawlers are 55 gallon bins, but it is only half. So we're coming up on the middle here, and this is where it's kind of the dividing between completely finished and still in progress. So as I go a little bit farther here, I expect to start running into more worms. Two-year-old pumpkin stem. And then I'm just gonna, again, keep moving everything over so you're starting to see a lot more worms. You can see there's leftover food here. And for right now, only things like avocado pits are gonna be the stuff that I move over. Um, the rest of the stuff they can continue work on as they're vacating the bin on this side. So you can see the food, little sprouts here. My whole garden will look like a forest of pumpkin sprouts or, or something if I leave them in. Okay, so now we're getting into the part that was fed two times ago. So probably gonna start seeing some much better sized worm balls. Higher population of worms. The moisture is much, much higher, which is good. The worms do, I mean, this is like a mud ball. The worms like being in this moisture a lot more. From what I understand from the books that I have read, about 80% moisture is their, their favorite for breeding and such. So depending on what your goals are, mine is just to make castings and to have a place to put my uh, compostable garbage. But uh, if you are trying to grow worms, then you know your goals are different than mine. So if you're still here, put in the comments below, what are your goals with worm farming? Are you doing it to get castings or are you trying to get worms? Why are you doing it? I know for me, it's, it's all about the castings. I don't really use the worms for anything else. I don't sell them, I don't sell the castings. I just have a big garden and I need all the castings I can get. And I do get about one ton 
per year. All right, let's move the camera and get you down to the part of the bin where we're going to feed this time. All righty. So I'm just going to put all these big things in that same bucket that I put my parts that I harvested out and grab some water and put that in there. The other creatures that are in the bin also like to have higher moisture. So if I want things to be processed faster, then I know that I have to keep the moisture at a really good level for not only the worms, but also the isopods and mites and, and everything. Last time I fed about six gallons of bedding and about two gallons of food. And I do that about once a month little bit, you know, like three weeks, not really four weeks. That's about what time I have in order to take care of the worms. I've got a busy schedule. Maybe a little less so now that the garden season is coming to a close. I was ripping out tomato plants this weekend. And uh, I'm going to have a lot of green tomatoes to process and possibly if I run out of things to make green tomatoes out of then I will put those in the freezers and the worms will have something to eat in the winter that is unusual at least until the uh, the pumpkin season comes when people start throwing away their Halloween pumpkins I've actually thought about growing pumpkins myself to feed to the worms, but I don't really have the space for that. Alright, looks like almost all of the food from last time is gone. Seeing a lot of seeds. I expect to see kind of a forest next time. Let's see. So after almost a month, the paper is still really recognizable here. There's about 20 pounds of worms in here, and that's a mix of the European night crawlers, the European night crawl, I'm sorry, European night crawlers, red wigglers, and blue worms. It's the uh, original Uncle Jim's mix. And although I didn't order blue worms, I'm totally fine with having them here. They actually do a really good job in the summer when it gets a little hot down here, whereas if it gets over 85 degrees, the red wigglers and the European night crawlers might start slowing down, but the blue worms will keep on kicking. All right, if we're gonna have a worm ball, it should be here. <sighs> eh, not really. A little bit, lots, lots of worms for sure. Let's see, a couple more handfuls here. Good amount of worms, they can handle a lot of food. If you only have a pound or two of worms, there's the worm ball. Okay, good worms. If you only have a pound or so of worms, then uh, absolutely do not feed as much as I do. My advice to every new worm farmer is to do the trial and error method. If you feed your worms this much, come back in three or four days. And if this is gone, maybe you could have given them a little bit extra always better to feed more bedding and less people food than to do too much people food uh, because the chances of it rotting and killing your worms is too high. Um, save the worms, save the world, right? And so that is my best advice. Uh, feed bedding, lots of bedding, and a little bit of people food and you can never go wrong. So out of that feeding that I did three weeks ago, the only thing left is that one little bit of the uh, zucchini. And so that means that what I fed was appropriate. Now they have all this bedding that they can still be chewing on and that's totally fine. So that's how I know that what I'm feeding is appropriate for the amount of time that I'm giving between feedings is that basically nothing is left when I come back. All right, well, let's get these guys the feeding for today. All right, no hitchhikers, get off there. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down some of that uh, packing paper that shows up in, in some of your packages that you get. And I'm gonna use that to kind of sop up the, 
the liquid that's going to come with the food today. So here's what we have today. I did get my avocados from Florida, so I've got the big, huge avocados. Got some spices. Um, these were sweet potato, um, sweet potato roots. And it looks like I've got some lemons, lots of tomatoes. There might be a forest of tomatoes the next time we come in. So I'm going to spread that out. So that's maybe not quite two gallons uh, in that big stock pot. But that will be fine because there is still a ton of food right here. These guys are going to be concentrating on this for right now. And in about two weeks, they'll move over to this. And by that time, all of our adorable little isopods, come on guys, all of our little adorable isopods will have a chance to uh, start working on that. And uh, then the worms can move in and have their party. All right, here's the part that I harvested last time been soaking in water for 15 minutes or so while I've been yammering on. So hopefully that will make that much more available. And then let's get them some bedding to cover all of this up. Okay, that's about two gallons of the bedding. So that should be enough for that. And then one of the things that I do just to uh, keep the environment nice and moist so that it does not dry out. The furnace is kicking on and off every once in a while now. I have this packing uh, sheet that came with something a long time ago and it it's loose. Any sort of gases that are created can escape from all four sides, but the moisture should stay in a lot better and that's been my experience is that um, covering it up keeps the moisture in the place where the worms are active and basically then helps it go faster. If anything dries off on the top, the worms won't touch it because they need that moisture. All right, guys. Well, if you like this particular bin, then I have a whole playlist that I will put right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that video right over there. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody. Have a good day.